Hi guys, before I start the review, I want to give a quick shout out to my sponsor, the Rangang Hotel, North Korea's premier six star hotel. Please ignore review that says we have rats. Untrue. Rangang Hotel is most rat free hotel in whole world. Enjoy very own bed. Don't believe crooked Western reports. Thank you, glorious leader Kim Jong Un. Death to the West. Use code Tennings for 5% off your first night stay. So luxury, you'll want to stay forever. Um, end, end of ad. End of ad. <clears throat> The Sopranos' road to respect is about as fun as remembering that James Gandolfini is dead. It's going to be hard to articulate, but this game strays so far away from anything resembling the tone and identity of the TV show that I was left wondering why it was even made at all. Oh, well, part of that. What I mean is that it's a game clearly not made for the people who actually like the show. And why do I say that? Because it's a big pile of duck shit! <laughs> Remember those idiots you knew growing up whose favourite film was Goodfellas or Casino or The Godfather, but only because they thought that those films were about being a cool gangster, when they're actually about how destructive that lifestyle is? You know the types, they'd quote it endlessly, have a Scarface poster on their wall, and only play FIFA. Louis Brazzi sleeps with the fishes. Luca Brazzi. Luca. Whatever. Well, The Sopranos Road to Respect feels like it was made for and by those people. Look what they've done to my boy. That's just a quote from The Sopranos there for anybody that didn't recognise it. I'm a big fan. The cover for the game is surprisingly cheap looking. I remember being younger, seeing this in stores, and being immediately put off by its design. It looks like something thrown together by Blast Games. I mean, you have Tony Soprano peering out of the shadows like a constipated Colonel Kurt. I mean, seriously, it looks like someone just asked him a hard maths question. Then you have these two lads, who you don't know, having a scrap with completely dead facial expressions. He's not even looking at the guy that he's fighting. My point is that this would often sit on shelves alongside the Godfather game, which came out months earlier, had an almost identical story and looked like this. Oh fuck, even before I read a review I know which game I'm going for. So normally for my reviews I write a detailed and often long introduction about the source material before diving into the game, which a lot of you seem to love. So here we go. <clears throat> the Sopranos is the best TV show ever made and you're a dumb poo head if you think any differently. That's the end of my introduction, here's the game. Try me later honey. I'm booked. In The Sopranos Road to Respect, you don't play as Tony Soprano, you play as... Hang on. Joey... La, La Rocca. Oh. Gone are the themes about family. Actually, fuck it. Gone are the family. You don't see Carmela, Meadow, Olivia, Junior, or Janice in the entire game. Gone are the compelling external and internal character conflicts. Hey, you like the scenes with Dr. Melfi? Well, fuck you. They're gone too. And gone is Tony Soprano, who takes a back seat for the majority of the game. Motherfuck. It's honestly like they made a list of everything that makes the show brilliant and then fired it out the fucking window. Who the fuck is Joey LaRocca? Well, he's Pussy's kid. You know, Big Pussy, one of Tony's closest friends in seasons one and two, who Tony had to whack because he was wearing a wire. In the show, he had three kids, so I guess that's quite interesting to play as one of them. Oh, wait, no, actually you don't play as one of them. No, no, instead you play as Pussy's illegitimate child. You know, the one who's never existed in the show. Where's Joey's mother, you ask? Who knows? She's never appeared in the show either. And wouldn't you know it, she never even appears in the fucking game. Anyway, before we get into it, I do want to talk about what I liked about the game. First of all, it is genuinely cool seeing some of the locations from the show presented in the game and being able to explore them. The graphics of the game were pretty stellar for the time too, so walking around the Bada Bing and the Delhi and Vesuvio has a really nice wave of nostalgia to it, and they're pretty well realised. Also, it can't be denied that it's so fucking awesome seeing the actual actors from the show portraying their characters. It elevates the game far beyond what it deserves, and the performances in the game are honestly great. Fuck the critic! Seeing and hearing a virtual Polly Walnuts always made me laugh. Get me a pastrami sandwich with Dijon mustard. My manicure's fucking room. Taking my mother Fernando's for hair. Twiddly D and twiddly dumbass. 
and made me forget what a big pile of fucking shite this useless game- Oh wait, <coughs> sorry, sorry this is meant to be the list of positives. Oh there's only one left actually, sorry. Um, the Bada Bing plays a gold frap song. And now, onto what a big pile of fucking shite this useless game is. So the biggest fundamental flaw that pissed me off the most about this game is that some asshole somewhere decided that The Sopranos is too clever to turn into a game. But instead of, oh, I don't know, not make it, they ended up purposely dumbing it down in a bastardized attempt to appeal to what gamers want. No, I'm more of a gamer. What the fuck is that? Video games, Sil. All the kids play them. He's an adult. I guess that David Chase was made an offer that he couldn't refuse. Just another uh, Sopranos quote there. Again, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a big fan. Apparently, the developers thought that the people who will buy the Sopranos video game aren't actually fans of the Sopranos. They don't want drama. They want poo-poo jokes. They don't want emotion. They want to go to the Bada Bing and have 40 fucking thousand different camera angles of naked strippers dancing. You in here uh, playing with yourself, Papa? They don't want a good story. They want guns that go bang bang and punchy punchy and be cool and play a game that leans into the lowest common denominator of what every mouth breather thinks that being a gangster is. You trashed my gem, remember, punk? And left you crying like a little bitch. We don't want to visit Tony Soprano's home, we want to visit a porn studio! Because that's where all the sex things happen! And that's what these virgins, <clears throat> I mean, gamers, want. Sex! Okay, now this I like. Keep going, oh my god, she's wearing a fucking bikini. What is going on? The name's Eva. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> they want elongated lap dances and close-ups of tits and being a pervert and coercing women into giving blowjobs and being asked do they want to rape an unconscious woman. Wait, what? She ain't even awake. So? Don't get shy now. That's quite an offer. Some other time. The sexual politics in this game are so fucking abhorrent that even the Last of Us 2 subreddit would be offended. Because they're all intelligent and completely rational people. Why? What did you think I was talking about? The problem is that we did not wait seven plus years to play as Abby. So the game opens up with a cutscene where Tony walks out of the deli and spots a scumbag robbing a car. He trips him up and brings him inside to berate him. Turns out that he recognises him as the son of his dead friend Pussy, who is our main character, and tells him to go home with the promise of some work sometime. I initially hated this cutscene because I thought that there was so much wrong with it as an introduction to the story and how stiff the character animation was, but I realised that that was slightly unfair because I was expecting it to look like the show, when in reality I'm playing a fucking PS2 game. This is fucking Citizen Kane compared to some of the muck that's been shat onto a screen from that console. Don't you see it? Where the don't you go telling? Don't you say it. I'll tell anyone I goddamn want to. He doesn't know. <laughs> He has no idea! The gameplay starts with a tutorial, with Syl instructing Joey, our main character, to beat up a guy outside the club. Apparently he laid his hands on one of the girls. What's the matter? She's a fucking stripper. It gives you the run through on what is honestly one of the most boring combat mechanics I've ever played. Literally 99% of the fights in this game is pressing the same button over and over again until you win. The fact that they felt the need to introduce this in a tutorial is hilarious. The even funnier thing is that they have a tutorial explaining how to do a special move, but every time I try to do it, Joey ends up getting elbowed in the face and the guy gets back to his feet. Turns out that the enemy has to be below a certain health before you can do the special move, which the game doesn't fucking tell you. It's the simplest combat system in the world, but the game doesn't tell you one of the only mechanics that it has. Christ on a bike. So after we smash the guy's face into the ground and leave him there for the world to see, we get to explore the Bada Bing, which I thought was quite fun, and there's some little details in here that I enjoyed, like the big mouth Billy Bass that Meadow gifted Tony, it's hanging on the wall in the office. I like it. Apart from that, the game starts dropping red flags like it's fucking Pearl Harbor. Like when Joey chats with Debbie, one of the strippers, the camera points straight to her chest. You also get to interact with all of the customers in the club, and Joey is Kind of an asshole to everyone, which is a great trait for your main character to have if you want to care about his story. 
Hey, got a smoke? Not for you. Have you ever met a rude person and simply wondered why? You also get to see Tony and his crew in the office, and if ever there was a rule that Tony Soprano's character model should never be in this game outside of cutscenes, I think this is it. He looks like if Danny DeVito and the botchling from The Witcher 3 had a child, and then it got stung by bees! Oh, listen to him. Then we get into a fight with a drunk guy and once again end up leaving him lying in the middle of the floor while everyone just ignores him. I mean, it's ridiculous, he could be dead, but everyone's like, eh, fuck it. <sighs> okay, so here's the rundown of the game's story. I fucking hate you all. So we find Paulie getting into a fight in the bathrooms and the game gives us one of the smoothest transitions into a fight that I've ever seen. Whatever you say, Paulie. Such grace! Joey then slams the guy's head repeatedly into the urinal before smashing his face off, and then they both act surprised when he's dead. Hold on, you killed him! You stupid shit! And Paulie tells Joey to get rid of the body. So our first mission finally begins, and where does it take place, you ask? The fucking docks! I swear to god, what is it with shitty games featuring levels at the docks? It's like a mandate goes around that is contractually obligated. If you're making something terrible, you have to have a level set in the docks. This is the third time I've complained about this. What is it about budget games having levels set in the docks? I even complained about this in my Beverly Hills Cop review. And lo and behold, just like Beverly Hills Cop and Demon Summoner, this game features features two levels set in the docks as well. What the fuck? Just stop it! It's also in this level where the game firmly cements itself as one of the single stupidest games in history. So Joey and his friend are going to the docks to dispose of a body, but apparently the only access that they have to an entire ocean coast is to break into this security facility, because I guess it's only this exact spot where you can dump a body in the water. There's no secluded beach somewhere, no no, you have to break into a guarded facility. And so as we're on our way to get rid of a body, when we get there, Joey ends up killing two other people. What the fuck? It makes no sense. And they just leave the two new bodies out there in the open. Honestly, when I played this, I was left in shock at the total lack of thought that went into this level. How could you possibly fuck the storytelling of your game up so badly? And then there's even more people that they kill on their way to the water. And no fuck up. Like what the fuck? It's also in this level where the game introduces the respect system, where if you fall below a certain threshold of respect, you get whacked and it's game over. Not once through my entire playthrough of this game did this ever become something I paid attention to. Especially considering that the only way to unlock all of the concept art in the game is to pay Polly money, and by doing so, you're constantly topping up your respect level. Also, I'm pretty certain that there is literally nothing else to spend your money on in the game. Aside from bad gambling minigames and even worse lap dances, you can't buy new costumes or any upgrades or weapons. So this respect system is the only thing you'll be spending your money on. So how the fuck would this ever even become an issue? There was one time during a level where you're not allowed to use your gun in a fist fight. I pressed the button to do a special move and Joey took out his gun and shot the dude in the face. That then triggered a cutscene where Joey gets whacked out on a boat in exactly the same way that his dad, Big Pussy, died. Which I'm sure Tony would have done, because reliving how you killed one of your best friends must be great fun. After the docks, we arrive at a casino, and it's here where the realization fully sets in that this game is going to be a fucking car bomb. The world that the game creates tries so hard to be funny and shocking, but is honestly one of the most embarrassing things I've ever had to sit through. For some reason, the developers tried to go for a satirical approach with the game, as if it were Grand Theft Auto, but it's just like they didn't know how, so instead they just ended up turning almost every man in the game into a raging misogynist. Baby, you are built, and I'm betting all original equipment too. You see the ass on that one way? Couldn't look away. You see the tits on that one waitress? She'll never die of drowning, that's for sure. I'm Carol. Shut up, bitch. This isn't just in this level either. Literally throughout the entire game, random NPCs just say the most baffling shit. <sighs> that's it, hon. Back to work. <gasps> A real tension killer. 
It's so strange and is totally out of tone from the show. And just to quickly address the people that I can already see commenting, calling me an SJW and Well, there's lots of that kind of stuff in The Sopranos. <laughs> You're absolutely right. There is. But it always comes from the characters in the mob where everyone is trying their best to appear as grossly masculine as possible. Because to be seen as anything else is seen as a weakness. It's literally why when Tony is losing the respect of his crew, he has to start a fight and kick the shit out of the biggest guy in the room to reassert dominance. Which afterwards, in private, nearly kills him. Which I believe is called a metaphor! My point is that the world of the show around the mob is full of normal, everyday people. It's set in reality. So when this stupid fucking game suddenly has every male character talk like this, Lady, this skank? It betrays one of the core themes of the show, and worst of all, it's intentional. The writers of the game literally think that this is what appeals to gamers. That gamers don't want a well-written dramatic adventure. They want pixelated tits and juvenile humour. Barely made it. They don't want a good story. They just want every female character to want to have sex with them. I didn't know you worked out here. And I didn't know you were such a badass. It's pathetic. Hey, guess what you can hear from behind some of the hotel room doors in the casino? <sighs> yeah, baby. That's it. Don't stop. Gosh, how clever. Hey, what's behind this door? Oh, look, a man offering you to have sex with an unconscious girl. Heavens to Betsy. How outrageous. And what about this one? It's... What? Try me later, honey. I'm booked. Get out! What? <laughs> what? What the fuck were they going for? I don't even know what the point of this level was apart from wasting time. All that happens is that the watch that Joey's friend Reggie snatched from the dead guy at the docks. Now I'm keeping this view. Gotta be worth 500 at least. He then had that watch stolen by a prostitute. Where's his watch, bitch? So Joey has to beat people up to get it back. Riveting. I played this level for 30 fucking minutes! Then Joey gets a lap dance, which is about as erotic as changing your dead granny's underwear. <laughs> the next level sees us going to a gym with Christopher. We bump into AJ driving around in an SUV and there's a nice scene with him and Christopher that feels like it's right out of the show. Hey, give me a call sometime. Now there's a three car pile up waiting to happen. Then the game starts again. This time it tries to make fun of gym culture and does the usual steroids jokes and people struggling to lift weights. That's right bitch, make it hurt bad. And for some reason the gym has the same posters on the wall as the strip club. You can overhear a woman being asked about her rash. Whatever happened with your rash? Let's not talk about it, okay? Which I guess is supposed to be funny. Two gym guys compliment each other's asses. Butt's really got some nice tone to it. A girl screams about mental midgets wanting towels on a phone. These mental midgets are gonna kill me! A guy begs two girls for a threesome in the sauna and you get to spy on the ladies locker room, where Joey then makes a Brazilian joke. Whoa, she's gone Brazilian. What the fuck is this game? Again, story-wise, not much happens in this level. Chris brings you along to help him get money from the owner, but along the way, learns that the owner has a side business selling steroids, so he wants in on the cut. Apparently, that then justifies Chris and Joey fighting their way through the entire gym, beating up tens of men twice their size. How the fuck does this make any sense? We also find out the guy that Joey killed... Alright, forget that fuck was someone important, and that it's now known Joey's friend Reggie is walking around wearing the dead guy's watch. Back at the bada bing, you can talk to a guy doing a poo, because doing poos is funny. Buddy, I'm taking a dump, give me a minute. So after the bada bing, then we go to the deli, because having just one interlude between missions apparently isn't enough anymore. Joey is told that because his friend Reggie was seen wearing the dead guy's watch, that he has to be killed, and Joey has to do it. Just a reminder, Joey is the one that murdered the guy, and now has to kill his friend because he took a watch. Fine. And Joey is totally happy to accept this, without giving a single second thought to his friend. Hey, I didn't kill that kid! Yeah, but you know who did. How in the fuck are we meant to like this prick? What, a guy can't drop by? 
So we go to Joey's friend's apartment building. Joey, being such a good friend, has no idea what number his friend lives in, so of course has to knock on every single door until he finds the right one. Obviously, there's a door you can knock where, you guessed it, there's a sex happening! Oh, 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 yeah. So Joey finds his friend's apartment and is all set to shoot him in the back of the head until a distraction causes his friend to spot him. Then it turns into a fight where Joey is so distraught over having to kill his best friend that he slams a freezer door onto his head, shit talks him while he chases him. Oh, you's running, Reg and kills the guy's friends who are just trying to protect him. There's a prompt during the fight with the friends where you can get an environmental kill with a television. So I do it and when Joey throws the guy into the TV, it doesn't smash. You had one fucking job, game! Then on another special kill, the camera travels to another room. Apparently it's too graphic for the game to show. So we chase Reggie up to the rooftop, but now Joey has a change of heart and lets his friend live. Until another mobster named Tuzio. Fuck! Tuzio! who like every important character in the game's story is not in the show, shoots Reggie instead. This angers Joey for some reason, like shithead you were trying to kill him for the last 10 minutes. We then have a shooting sequence and end up shooting Tuzio so much that he falls off the roof. And I guess that Joey doesn't check to make sure that he's dead because we have to do another mission later in the game where we kill him in a hospital. <sighs> This game is so fucking exhausting, yet somehow it gets worse! The game executes the rest of its story with the same level of proficiency as when the irate gamer pretends that celebrities are appearing in his videos, but actually just buys a shout out on Cameo. Hey, irate gamer, this is Ernie Hudson, Winston Zedmore from, you know, Ghostbusters, Oz, Anna Rocks the Cradle, with that same few film and TV shows. Whoa, what? Ernie Hudson? What are you doing to my show? Oh, I fucking love the irate gamer. Call me, Chris! Fans of the show might remember a really insignificant subplot that happens at the end of Series 5, where Tony's son AJ organises a party and considers studying event management. She mentioned that AJ talked to her once about what might be good schools to study event planning. Event planning? This subplot is what's used to drive the rest of the game's main story forward. I want you to work security. No way. It's laughable! So AJ asks Joey to do security at a party that he's throwing, and for God knows why, Joey says yes! Ditch the knife, asshole! And of course, at the end of the level, AJ's SUV gets stolen, so wouldn't you know it, it's up to Joey to get it back. So you then play through two levels to find the SUV, and when you finally get it, it just gets stolen again! How many times is this gonna happen? The rest of the levels in the game in order are Bada Bing, a rave, Bada Bing, a garage, Son of a bitch just crushed your arm! A law office, Bada Bing, a porn studio, Bada bing. How is everything? Wonderful, Joey. Thank you. The gym. Again. The deli. Again. A hospital. Oh! Bada bing. The docks. The fucking docks! Bada bing. What is this room? Every time I'm here, I always go into this room and no one's ever been in it. It's as empty as my soul. Throughout the game, Joey also develops a relationship with Trishel. You know, the girl who he perved on when he was spying on the women's locker rooms in the gym. Whoa, she's gone Brazilian. What a sweetheart! If I knew you went into these dirt bags, I would have torched it sooner. That's the sweetest thing I ever heard. Aw, oh, look at them share a nice tender moment together. She's a lucky girl! I'm sure that she won't be used as some sort of plot device later on. So Trish ends up getting the shit beaten out of her and also implies that she was raped. Then Louie and, and another guy. Son of a fucking bitch! <laughs> Fuck me. This game is about as sensitive to women as cervical cancer. If any story anywhere doesn't deserve to use this as a plot device, then please let me know. A rape would feel less out of place in an episode of Barney the fucking dinosaur instead of this game. <laughs> I think my happy day is turning into a sad day. 
The whole game feels like it was written by a group of sexually repressed threadworms, and then they throw a rape into the mix to try and suddenly make the game's tone serious? It's fucking tragic! So, of course, our valiant hero has to seek vengeance for the honour of his dear lady and kills the game's main villain. Who is uh, this guy? apparently. There's a really weird moment at the start of this level where Joey gets captured and the game explicitly implies that it was Christopher that tipped him off. Tell Angie we found them, just like Christopher said. Throughout the game, Christopher and Joey have had a rivalry with Chris being jealous of Joey rising up through the ranks. And so when this moment happened, I was full sure that it would lead to a final Chris and Joey confrontation, but instead, NOTHING HAPPENS! This is the last time that it's ever brought up! The next time we see Chris, it's just never mentioned! They just dropped it, like what the fuck?! Like what was the point?! Then Joey gets officially initiated into the family and uh, the game ends. Weak. Fucking. Shit. I've left out so many moments of bullshit that happened over the course of this game. Stuff like being able to push Tony's character model as far down the map as possible. She's not the one. How the children at the bar mitzvah dance like elderly people with crippling osteoporosis. Then Joey joins them and does the exact same thing. Christ. At least consult the experts before you dance at a bar mitzvah. This is something that we all love to do when we're at a bar mitzvah. <laughs> Some Jewish kablabla shit. A guy trying to be a tough gangster says, Don't, don't hate, hate the, the player, player, hate the game. game. I do! An enemy's gun glitches out and fires non-stop, even when he's running. Then the sound of the game breaks. Now I'm standing in front of him, and no nothing's happening. He's just still firing. Two lawyers discuss a woman suing the company for sexual assault. She's claiming sexual harassment, discrimination, the whole nine yards. Where do they work? Channel Awesome? A guy gives another guy a blowjob. Because gay! I'm, I'm a, a fluffer, fluffer not, not a, fighter. a fighter. An old man is scolded for groping a nurse. I think I, think I, I peed, peed my pants. pants. Overturn a porta potty and rub a guard's face in the poo poo. I also left out that throughout the game, Joey sees visions of Big Pussy, his dead father. It first happens at the docks when you dump the body in the water. I see the guy you're doing Polly's dirty work. That. This comes completely out of nowhere, and Joey doesn't react. Like, at all! You can't do any worse than you did. Obviously, this is in here because in the show, Tony would sometimes hallucinate when he's under intense stress or feeling overwhelming guilt, but here, it makes absolutely zero sense. Throughout the game, Joey shows absolutely no reverence for his father. Joey LaRocca. Hear that? Joey LaRocca. And, as far as we know, has never even met him. Why do you care? You're like a dream or something, right? Joey is an illegitimate child. In an earlier conversation with Christopher, he makes it quite clear that he doesn't care about his dad and makes no effort to defend his honor. My mother raised me. I didn't have shit to do with my old man. But we're expected to believe that he cares enough to see visions of him and receive wisdom from him? We see Pussy appear multiple times throughout the game, and each time Joey couldn't be more uninterested. And even on the big reveal, when Joey learns that his dad was killed by Tony, He took a fucking oath, same one you're about to take, and then he violated that oath. End the story. He just shrugs it off, and then at the end, Pussy sits in the corner of the room and tells him that he's proud. What's the point? He doesn't give a fuck! I mentioned earlier that when you pay Pauly, you also unlock concept art, so let's have a quick look and see what we unlocked. Fucking hell. If I was playing this game on Twitch, I'd probably be in prison by now. While we're on the topic of special features, there's also some really weird movies included. The first video that's in there is literally a three second long clip of a line reading. And that's it. Never wear a dead man's watch, especially if you whack the guy. Why even bother? Then there's a strange outtakes movie where the devs show some funny glitches that happened during the development, as if to say that the finished game didn't have any. The really bizarre thing about this is that they cast the guy who voiced Largo Winch to do all of the dialogue. What? Your boyfriend not taking care of you? I wanted to congratulate you for setting up this whole thing. Not sure why they replaced him. Maybe they didn't think he sounded Italian enough. 
The really sad thing about this game is that nobody involved in the show wanted a game to be made from it. Even in the promotional interviews, David Chase, the creator, talks about how he didn't want to see the show truly represented in the game, and that it was HBO who wanted to cash in on the show's popularity. If anything, playing this game really cemented for me the fact that the games industry back then really wasn't respected as a form of storytelling in the industry. Even in Chase's interview, he says, It does not pique my interest to work on games. The game is different. There's no identification really any emotional identification. This reminded me a lot of The Matrix, Path of Neo, when at the very end of that game, the Wachowskis literally interrupt the game to tell the players that the conclusion of their trilogy works in the movies, but wouldn't in the game. Now, the real reason we're here is to discuss the big problem we faced in turning these three movies into a video game. So they made you fight a Godzilla agent Smith instead. And although I disagree with the Wachowskis and Chase, I can totally see why they'd have that opinion, considering that the immature game mentality that their games are pandering to definitely existed back then and continues to exist to this day. You gotta be kidding me. We gotta put a stop to this. If I'm mad at The Sopranos Road to Respect, it's because I'm disappointed. It had all of the ingredients to be special, but because they focused the story on Deciding future game reviews, outtakes, and scripts. Ah! Mario! Oh! I just know something bad is going to happen.